everyone, welcome to the Inspired Knitting Podcast. I'm your host, Bobby, and this is episode 89. Uh, we're getting there. <laughs> um, it is July the 8th, Saturday, July the 8th. Can't believe that it's July already. Um, and yeah, that's all I pretty much have to say. Um, this is a podcast about my knitting adventures and sometimes there is crocheting and spinning in there as well. So yeah, lots of fibery fun. I feel a little off today. <laughs> it's been a month since I last podcasted. Um, so I hope you guys all been well. I've missed chatting with you. Um, I end up getting sick right after the last podcast. It was just a a cold uh, so thank you you know who you are I love you um, but yeah I got a cold and that kind of knocked me down for about a week or so and then we've had like a good blast of heat here in southern Ontario we had humid X's um, I'm pretty sure that hit 40 in some spots so it has been hot we had a little bit of a like some storms moved through them yesterday. So it kind of took out some of that heat, but she's still pretty warm. But I have the AC turned off right now because it would just be too loud. It's, yeah, that's too much. But I still got my coffee because I need my coffee. I'm on my second one today and it is much needed. So yeah, um, not too much has been going on. It's been um, a busy, been a busy um, month like June was busy and it's gonna continue being busy all summer um, there's gonna be some pretty big changes coming uh, into my life and I'm excited about it a little sad about it too but it's all good but I just don't want to share about it right now just not quite there yet I'm not ready but anyways it's all good but some big changes are coming so um, I'm gonna try very, very hard to keep up with the two if podcasting every two weeks, um, but yeah, the pod. I'm definitely not going anywhere. The podcast will continue, but this is just a forewarning that I don't know if I'll continue podcasting every two weeks. I'm gonna try my darndest though. Anyways. All that to say, um, I don't think I said, show notes are in the description box below. I always post you directly to any designers that I talk about or makers. Um, there's like this little arrow that you can click that expands and um, the links are all there. So um, yeah, I think that's about it. So I have finished objects today. I have works in progress, a lot of socks. And I did bring some stash enhancement with me um, just because I feel the podcast might be a little short. I don't know yet, but I will put those in as well because I do know that some of you love seeing uh, stash enhancements. I love seeing stash enhancements because I find it's a great way to see uh, new makers that I've never heard of before. And uh, yeah, let's get on with it. So I hope everybody had a good Canada Day long weekend and a good 4th of July to my American friends. It was a nice one here. So, okay, Summer Sock Camp is in full force and it's a, an obsession. I just love knitting socks. And uh, if you're not familiar, Kay the Crazy Sock Lady is the one that hosts uh, Summer Sock Camp. I believe this is her fourth year of doing this. It could be more, I'm not sure. But it's just a fun knit along, it's free. You can hop on over to her Ravelry and get all the information that you need. But um, just knit socks. It started, I believe, May 31st and goes to August 31st. And you can knit them on nine inch circulars, on Magic Loop, uh, you could, crochet them if you want it to. It's really amazing and you could use any weight of yarn as well and I believe one of my viewers and I thank you uh, for commenting, baby socks are included so that is really really cool. 
So, um, yeah, it's a really fun knit along. And if you do not know who Kay is, go check her out, Crazy Sock Lady Designs, here on YouTube. She has a wonderful podcast. And I, I just love her. She's so inspiring. And she's also a designer as well. And this finished pair that I'm about to show you is one of her designs. So you have seen these as a work in progress. Well, they are now finished. These are Kay's um, Follow Your Path socks. So Kay Litton, Crazy Sock Lady Designs. And it's got this beautiful ribbed kind of cable, super easy to do. Actually, it's not a cable, it's more like a, a twist stitch. It's got a eye of partridge, a heel flap and gusset. Absolutely beautiful. So I finished those, I believe I finished these in early June and I am obsessed. I absolutely love the pattern. I will definitely be doing these again. Not 100% sure, but if you use one of Kay's patterns uh, for summer sock camp, you can double dip. I'm not sure. There are prizes. I think that she's randomly picking prizes throughout the um, throughout the uh, event, but I believe you can double dip if you, um, like you can post twice to get two entries. But yeah, I knit these with Koigu KKPN. Um, it is a merino wool, but it does not have nylon. And I spoke about this before. Um, I was told that it has a very high twist, which it does. And that is really good for socks. It does hold up. So I'm giving it a chance. And I must say, and I did not bring it with over with me, but I did go to my local yarn store with Pearl and Jay, and I've purchased a couple other like sock variations of uh, this. So they come in 50 gram balls or skeins, I should say. So for me, I was able to knit this out of um, what this is, the main color is Nomad and this is turquoise. So I got one um, skein of each and that got me a pair of socks. So roughly my leg, I usually knit my leg cuff to here, roughly seven inches. And my foot is roughly like eight, eight and a half inches, like seven and a half inches from the gusset to the toe. So for me to knit a whole pair of socks, cuff heels and toes out of 50 gram, it is not possible. And I don't really care for shorty socks, although I kind of want to knit shorty socks, but, um, I prefer this length of sock and for me, the way that I knit with my gauge, um, I had to use uh, a contrast for the heels, toes and cuffs, which I am totally fine with because I think it is absolutely beautiful. So I don't know how much yardage I have left over. Um, if I was really good about it, I would like weigh out my yarn and actually post it to my Ravelry page. That would be smart. <laughs> but um, yeah, I definitely have leftovers. Um, not a lot, but they will just go into one of my, um, my memory blankets. But they are all done. Follow your path. Crazy Sock Lady Designs. Go over and check it out. I used a two millimeter Chagu um, 40 inch Cirque to knit them and I love them. They're wonderful. So that's my first finished object. My second finished object is a brand new cast on. I started this one in June, I believe. And it is a, I literally just finished this the other day. I have not washed it, blocked it, or anything. Not even put my ends in. But this is a new shawl that's going to be coming out by Chick and Regal Designs, who is Helena. Hi, Helena. I absolutely love her designs. I have test knitted for her before, and I absolutely love her. All of her patterns, a portion of her uh, sales go to uh, her local rescue animal shelter. And I just love that. Animals, um, they hold a very dear spot in my heart. 
I am a crazy, I am a crazy cat lady, but I love all animals. And yes, I am one of those crazy people that even talk to squirrels and chickamauks, for which my neighbors have caught me doing a couple times. So it's out there and I don't care. <laughs> I don't care. I love animals. So the very fact that she donates a portion of her sales, that makes it even more better. But Helena is an amazing uh, designer and her patterns are very well written. So I've seen her come out with this uh, test call and I just had to throw my hat in for it because I thought it was so pretty. So I'm going to show you first. So this hasn't been released yet, but this is her new pooling by the pool. I think that's what she's going to call it. I'm not sure, but I'm pretty sure. So it is like a circular type shawl or crescent, sorry, crescent uh, shawl. And what I love is the, like the big wingspan. I love shawls that do that. So this one here, I did in fingering weight and it uses the yarn that has the assigned pooling. So I have two skeins of this yarn, and if it's familiar to you, it's because I had started, I got this kit last year at the Northern Pearl, and it was for the Calico Shawl, Calico Shawl, and I can't remember who that uh, pattern is by, but assigned pooling was like a huge thing uh, last year. Um, so what it is, it comes in a skein like this, this one, let me see, this is dyed by the Northern Pearl Agile. So it looks like this. So a portion of your, your skein, it doesn't have to be white. They, they come in different colors, but the portion of the uh, skein is dyed in a different color. And I'm just gonna point this out because I absolutely love it. Agile th threw in like spots of pink. I just love that, it's so pretty. Anyways, um, once you you just knit uh, whatever project it is that you're knitting on, you just do like a plain knit. And when you come to that green part here, um, you do like a special stitch. So that's how the calico was written. And pretty much that is how this shawl is done as well. So it is very, very cool. Now you're not gonna get the whole effect of it because I didn't wash or block this out yet, but you can see that there's like a special splash stitch as it's called. It's so pretty and it's so much fun. So I really love this and I'm not giving anything away but it is super, super simple. I would say this is a very beginner friendly shawl, um, very beginner friendly. And yeah, I absolutely love it. And once it gets blocked out, you'll be able to see it a lot better. Like I said, those stitches will come out a lot better, but I just love the look of this. It is so pretty. So yeah. I'll just try to put it on here. It's not gonna be that that pretty because I didn't block it, but it's just so, so nice. And once it blocks out, it's gonna grow garter. It's all garter. So it's gonna be like super squishy and beautiful. I absolutely love it. So I'm guessing that it's going to be out within the next couple weeks, I'm guessing. and. Uh, it is calling for two skeins of a DK weight assigned yarn, so the assigned pooling. So uh, that's the only thing. I'm sure that if you wanted to just do a solid color even if you wanted to. Once you get the pattern and you know how it works, I think it could be possible, but the pattern is written for assigned yarn. And I would totally go for it because assigned yarn is so much fun. You, once you get to that color, it's very potato chippy. So you get to that color and you get to create your special stitch. Uh, in this case, you don't always do that special stitch because you wanna 
um, you're kind of your own designer with it, which is also very fun. So, um, yeah, you get to that color and you get to do this special stitch and you get to see this shawl come to life. I think it's very fun and it keeps you engaged and going. So it calls for two skeins of a DK weight. I used fingering weight uh, just to try it out. We're seeing how a fingering weight held up. So the finished uh, measurements are 15 inches deep by, I believe it was 54 or 56 inches wide, like for wingspan. So I did reach gauge when it came to the depth except my wingspan is 63 inches, which is a little bit longer, which could have something to do with my gauge. Um, but either way, it did work out. And so there might be a fingering weight version included in the pattern. I'm not sure yet. We will have to wait and see. But this is my finished shawl and I absolutely love it. And I cannot wait to wash and block it and get some finished photos of it. So follow Helena over on, Ravel on Ravelry and Instagram as Chick and Regal Knits and keep a watch out for this pattern, which like I said, it might be released in the next week or so. So there's that. That pretty much took up a lot of my knitting for June and it was so much needed. It was a relaxing knit. It's it didn't take hardly any brain power at all to do. It was just what I needed. So yes, for that one, I used 3.5 millimeter needles and I only used one of the, one of the skeins. I had two. Um, so yeah, if I wash and block it and I see that it is still, it's still on the smaller side, because if you've been watching me for a while, you know I like my shawls a bit bigger, um, I might consider adding in some of that other skein just to make it grow, um, but I'm not sure yet. I might keep it on the smaller side, I don't know. Okay, so that's all I have sadly for finished objects. So let's move on into works in progress. So I'm just gonna sit some of this over here to make some room. All right, so let's see what we have here. So this is gonna be uh, pretty much sock talk <laughs> right now because I have been like knitting all the socks. And I probably would have had some as a finished object if I hadn't cast it on so many, but there's no fun in that. So I'm just going to put this one on the blocker. I have a, um, a hoe, so I guess that counts as a finished object, sort of. So I don't remember if I showed these last time on the podcast. I honestly can't remember but I have this beautiful pair here I know I showed it on my Instagram this is another one of Kay's uh, patterns crazy sock lady designs this is her heel toe do -si do pattern and I am knitting these pull out my tag here um I got this from Yarn It and Coburg and I'm going to mess this up big time because I don't really speak French so I'm just going to show you the tag. <laughs> I have heard of them before. Come on focus. Absolutely beautiful yarn. I think it's Soares and Lane Entree. And the base is Anna. It's a fingering 80 20, uh, super, it's not super wash, it just says 80% merino. Oh, it is 80% super wash merino, 20% nylon, uh, 434 yards, and 130 grams. And it is on in the popsicle colorway. 
So I believe I did show this before. Um, so it is a self-striping uh, yarn and it came with it came in uh, 250 gram uh, balls and then it came with a purple mini, which um, yeah, I'm definitely sure that I showed it now. Um, I am not using the mini skein. Um, I just put it into my bin for something else. And the reason being is you can see that the it is self-striping yarn, but the repeats of color are kind of long. Not really, but somewhat. And I chose to cast on my purple first. So, and the purple is, it's a little bit lighter, but I felt it would have blended in way too much. So I really wanted, I really wanted that green to come out and I wanted more of the pinks, oranges and the pinks, cause that's one of my favorite parts. So I just decided against, uh, against putting the mini in with it but it was a, I believe it was a 20 gram, a 20 gram mini skein, I believe. So there is the pattern, heel toe do -si do It's quite a popular pattern. It's very, very beautiful, especially on a self-striping yarn. And it's got a slip stitch, heel flap and gusset. And it the patterning is just like on the front of the uh, the leg and the foot. It's the back is just plain knitting. So I'm really really enjoying these. It is a simple pattern. Um, you have to look at your pattern at first to remember the repeats. Uh, but after a couple of them, I I got it and I didn't have to keep looking. But um, so I got the first one finished. And I did cast on the second, and I have it going as well. So I have that much, that much done so far. It is so pretty. I absolutely love it, and this yarn is beautiful. This is my first time working with their yarn, and I must say I'm pretty, pretty obsessed with it. My progress keeper is from Arkansas Yarn Co. I got one of their Sock Society boxes last summer and I absolutely love it. It's got the little lemons in it and I also got the Yarn Cozy from them as well. I love it. Really wish I could continue getting those boxes because I just, I love their aesthetic and their colors but it's just a little bit out of my budget. So anyways, that is my heel toe do, -si do I hope to have, I would like to work on that one and get it done, but that is my first sock. And then, I actually, I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna show you this one here. So there's a funny story behind this one. So I casted on um, a pair of Rhineback Roomies. And again, I don't remember. It's been a month since I last talked to you guys and I honestly cannot remember anything. But I casted on a pair of Rhineback Roomies. Haven't made much progress at all. The yarn is from uh, the Northern Pearl. This was their uh, April Mystery Club of the Month. I absolutely love, love the pastels. And it also came with, um, let me get it, this beautiful Egg Progress Keeper. So cute. So, <laughs> funny story, these socks did not see any work on them. I took the project with me um, in the van to go somewhere and I thought I lost it. It was lost for about a week and a half and I was like devastated because I spoke about it before. I made the matching bag for me and Agile for her birthday. It's got this cute little pin on it. 
that she got me and I was like so devastated that I potentially lost this project in the bag. Well, I woke up through the night uh, last week and I it was like a light bulb moment. I remembered where I had put it. I had gotten some yarn while we were out and I put the project bag in with the bag of yarn. <laughs> and I put it away for safekeeping and yeah. So yeah, I found my project and my bag and I am so happy about that. But it's so funny how we do that. We put things away for safekeeping and then can't find them. So anyways, I'm glad that I found it. So these socks haven't seen that much progress, but now that I have found it, I plan on working on them because I really, really love them. So this is the Rhineback Roomies uh, sock by Kay Litton. Crazy Sock Lady Designs, another one of her patterns. And it is so much fun. It is an all over textured stitch, but it is very easy to do and memorize. So this is the first sock. So I am, I always knit my socks on a two millimeter uh, Chagu um, Magic Loop. For this one, I think I cast it on 56 or 64 stitches. I think I've gone back up to 64 stitches. My gauge is changing again and um, I realize either my gauge is changing again or um, yeah, I think it is because I, before if I knit 64 stitches on Magic Loop because Magic Loop I am tighter, um, my socks came out way too big and now they're, they're snugging up a bit. So anyways, that's what I got going there. So now that they're out, I can work on them. So that's sock number two as a work in progress. And because I had lost that project, I decided to cast on another sock because I wanted something. Although the heel toe do, -si -do is easy, it's still, the stitch is still something that you kind of have to focus on. You don't, you could mess it up. Not badly, but you could. So I wanted something that was just plain knitting. So I ended up pulling this skein. I didn't want to cake anything up that day. It was super hot. So this one came in a, like a ball form. Um, I just, after knitting the first sock, I just caked it up. So this is the Comfort Sock and Wool. I picked this up at Yarnet and Coburg. And it is, let me see here, a 75% superwash merino and 25 polyamide. And I believe the colorway name or number, it is a number, is 8837. And as you can see, it's like these purples and blacks, and like the black is marled. It's so pretty. I got another one of these. Um, it's got the black uh, marl in it but it's greens and I, I plan to knit those as well because I really love this. So I'm gonna put it on the sock blocker cause I think it looks nicer, but I got the first one done. I kind of flew through it. <laughs> so here's my first one all finished. As you can see, it kind of does a self striping effect, which I really, really love. And for this one, I cast it on 64 stitches. I did about uh, 30 rows of, uh, no, 28 rows of two by two uh, ribbing. And then for the main body of the sock, I am doing a three by one rib and then a plain knit row, three by one rib, a plain knit row. And that is how they're turning out. I did a slip stitch 
heel flap and gusset and I also did the garter tab on each side of the heel flap. I think it just adds like this nice little detail and it makes it like pretty easy to pick up your heel flap stitches. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much all I'm doing. I didn't follow a pattern. I just, I was going to do plain vanilla because, you know, the, the marling and the striping would have taken away from any textures or patterns. But as much as I like vanilla, I really have been loving rib socks. So it's very relaxing for me just to do the ribs. So I really don't mind purling. So that's what I did. And if you're wondering why all those light bulb stitch markers are there, um, Agile had shared a tip with me. I had seen it before. I was just too lazy to do it. Uh, I always measured um, my socks and she brought up a good point that uh, sometimes our gauge could be different or when we measure one sock, especially if you were to try that sock on, um, it could slightly stretch it. Or if you're like me and sometimes put them on a blocker, it could stretch it. So when you go to measure this sock, it could be slightly off. And then when you go to measure your second one, you could have a sock that ends up being either too, too tall or too short or what have you. So by putting the stitch markers in, this from my cuff to this first light bulb marker marks 10 rows. And then in between the light bulb markers is another 10 rows. So I have 10, 20, 30, 40. I did 50 rows for my uh, leg. And then I think I got six, 60 rows for my foot. So each, between each marker is 10 rows. And that is such a good idea. And it really helps you keep things in line. And it's also a good reference to you know, if you want to know how many rows that you did uh, for future reference. So it's a really good idea. And I don't always do that, but for this sock, I decided to do it. And I think that I should keep doing it because yeah, it's a really good idea. So just a little tip that was shared with me that I wanted to pass on. And you can find these uh, light bulb stitch markers um, in your local yarn store or um i got like this big bag of uh light bulb markers they come in you can i think you can just get them like in silver gold rose gold um but i got this multicolored bag and there's like a thousand a thousand i'm not kidding uh in a package and i did not pay that much for it so amazon has a good option for these as well so there's my first sock. I really love the marl and it was pretty quick to knit up. So I have that one all done and I cast it on the second one and I managed to get that far into it. So the cuff is done and I am now starting onto the, the foot of the sock. And Usually I'm kind of OCD about stuff like this, especially if it's a self-striping yarn. They are not going to match up totally. So on this sock, you can see that lavender has started. So it's going to be off like that much if you were to align it. And you know what, guys? I'm not even worried about it. I just casted this sock off and casted this one on and... I'm not worried about it. They're gonna be off, but I don't care. I'm gonna try not to care. <laughs> so anyways, that is my third pair of socks for summer sock camp, which are very enjoyable and they, they won't take any time at all to, to do. They, they're the ones that I'm kind of gravitating to because they're just, they're just so simple to, to knit through. So I'm just going to grab a sip of my coffee. I have one more sock whip to share with you. I just casted this one on last night. 
So I was super excited to hear that Stephen West was doing his first mystery sock along. And I haven't done a lot of Stephen's patterns and I'm not sure why, because I think they are all, they're masterpieces, they are works of art. And I've done a couple of his shawls and I definitely want to do more for sure. But because I'm on this sock craze and it's summer sock camp, I could not say no to doing this uh, mystery sock along. And as y'all's doing it with me, we're doing different colors though. So the pattern, the first clue came out July 6th, uh, which was two days ago. And I believe you're gonna get a pattern update every, like an, a new clue every week. And I think there's four clues, I believe. So you need two skeins of fingering weight. Um, he, if you go over to his website or his um, Instagram, uh, he has some uh, color options uh, that like color ideas. You can also order kits from his website as well. Um, so the pattern is called Contrast Blast and it uses uh, two, two skeins that would be high contrast. So one would be high contrast to the other. So I will show you the yarns first. And then if you don't wanna be spoiled, um, then just look away. But right now I'm just gonna show the yarns. So I went to uh, my local yarn store, the Pearl and Jay. Um, I was having a very stressful week last week and I decided that I wanted to treat myself to some yarn. So I went there with this sock pattern in mind and I picked out two skeins of yarn so these are my two. So I just have to be careful because they are hooked up here. So I'm using H and Arts yarn. So this is my first color, which is purple uh, with these hints of uh, blue in it. Very, very pretty. Now at first I was a little bit worried that these hints of blue, they won't con they're not a high contrast to my other color, but I think it should be okay. So that's my first color and it's, that's true to color right there. And that, that one, I should show you the tags before I get too carried away here. So I'm not gonna be able to tell you the name of it because I think it's French, but there's the tag, Ancient Arts, love Ancient Arts yarn. And that is the colorway name for the purple one I just showed you. And this yarn is on their sock NATO base, which is an 80% super wash fine merino, 20% nylon. It is 385 yards per 100 grams. So that was the first colorway. And the second one is also ancient arts yarn. And this one is called Tiny Orchid, and it is also on the sock NATO base. This color, you guys, is so me. I love it. It's a light lavender with all these tiny little specks. There's green and there's blue. There's like a darker purple and a yellow. So pretty. So I saw those two and I thought, they would be perfect. So that is your high contrast. So a lot of Steven's kits were solids, uh, but you could do, you could do a speckle as long as it, there would be a high contrast. So this is my, my high contrast. This is my pick. He had a kit that had two purples. They were two solid purples and it was similar to this, a darker purple with the lighter, uh, lavender and I really really loved it so I was super excited to find something somewhat similar to that. So clue one came out July 6th so I was able to cast on yesterday or last night and so this is a part where if you are doing it and you do not want to be spoiled uh, just look away for a few minutes uh, or I should say skip ahead a few minutes because I will be talking about it as well. So I'm gonna show it now. 
So this is clue one. So I started with my darker yarn and you can see those pops of blue coming out. So I don't think I have to be worried about the contrast. Not entirely sure yet, but I don't think so. And it's really cool because you can see there are cables. And you know me, I love my cables. And it does go, the pattern does go all the way around the sock. So, um, yeah, I got the first part, I got the cuff done, I got the cables done, and now I'm about to start into um, the next part, like the next section, which will be including my contrast color. And if you wish to see what clue one looks like, uh, if you head over to Steven's Instagram page, uh, he does show uh, people's progress. Some people like have already flown through clue one and they have it finished and it looks so pretty. I don't mind, I don't mind being spoiled uh, by clues. I guess it kind of depends what it is, but um, mostly for mystery knit alongs i always do the cozy up knits uh shawl along every uh january i they're absolutely wonderful designers and i i even look forward because they do a video every week i always watch the video just to to see what the clue is and such and i think the reason why is because i like to it's color placement same with um and Imagine landscapes for the gnomes. Um, whenever we do the mystery gnome along, um, I think for one one or two of the gnomes, I did actually just follow along with the the mystery without you know looking at it or spoiling it. But with the last one, actually, I do have another finished object. I did not bring it. Um, but for the last gnome that I made, um, I actually waited <laughs> until it was pretty much all released. That way I could see where my colors are going, just because I am very picky about color placement. So I did see um, I did see the clue completed clues last night, and I determined that I wanted my darker yarn to cast on first. Um, so yeah, that's what I did, and I love it so far. And knowing what it clue one looks like, it's fun. So and I. It's something that I haven't done before, which is something else that I really love about Steven's patterns. So I put it away now. It's it's gone until till next time. But that's what I really love about Steven's patterns is that there's always something fun in there that you possibly haven't done before and you get to try it. So I really like that. So I think that I'm gonna pause the video here for a minute. That way I can go grab the other thing that I didn't show because if I don't, I probably won't. So I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. <laughs> I couldn't find it, what I was looking for, um, but I finished th the new mystery gnome that had come out. So um, I will try to remember, I'll put a reminder on my phone. Um, so when I podcast next time, next time, I can actually share it with you. But I did the mystery uh, gnome can't even remember what it was called now, but it was the latest mystery gnome from Imagine Landscapes and he was so much fun to make. So I did make that as well, but I'm sorry, I couldn't find it. The apartment's in a little bit of a mess right now, like not a mess, but yeah, can't find it. So anyways, uh, so I can't share that with you, but I do have one more, um, active whip that I have been working on and I should have had this done because I've been working on it for a couple weeks but I don't know it just didn't happen so I I shared with you guys I had made a dragon um so I gifted it to Lily and I am now going to make a uh, two more stuffies uh, for her cousins. So I decided uh, it's a brother and a sister. So the brother would like a, a dragon as well. So I had 
started a green one and we're talking like this was in January, February. <sighs> it's crocheted, which I do love crochet, but it's kind of hard on the hands and I'm using acrylic. I'm being a princess, what have you. Uh, he doesn't know what's coming to him. So um, that makes me feel good that I'm not totally terrible, but uh, he's going to get a dragon. And for his sister, she, um, mom was unsure. So I'm not even sure she's going to like this, but she loves cats. So I found this really cute Hello Kitty pattern. It's called, the pattern is called Hello Kitty and it's by Knitter, Knitter Bees on Ravelry. It is a paid for pattern. It's very well written. It is knitted. So here's the face. So I am using acrylic yarn for this as well because you know for children they get things dirty uh so i am using impeccable which is by loops and threads i got this at michael's so i'm using that for the white and then the pink i'm just using leftovers from my dragon and this is Patton's astra which is also an acrylic um so the impeccable is slightly thicker than the astra but it still worked so that is what i am using uh, i think i'm using i'll just see my needles here i am using a us4 3.5 millimeter needle and i am doing it magic loop method because working with dpns not happening and this is what i have created so far so her head is now done and so is her body so all i have to do is uh her little arms and her little feet and she is all finished she's going to be like super cute I really love her and I'm so proud of myself because, and I'm getting my project bag and my coffee. I am so proud of myself because this little section here of gray, the gray is acrylic too. It's just something I had laying around, um, is duplicate stitch. And I am so proud of myself because you knit the body and then you do there's like this little chart to duplicate stitch this piece here. So when she's all sewn together, it's going, her little arms are gonna be here. So it makes her look like she's wearing pink overalls. So you duplicate stitch that onto the body that you've already knitted. And when I saw that, I was like, maybe that part's not gonna be there. <laughs> Cause I have detested duplicate stitch for so long. Well, I love referring to Very Pink Knits, who is Stacy on YouTube. She has all these wonderful uh, knitting tutorials. And I remember following her tutorial from years ago when I had first started knitting. And it's very clear she does it normal speed and then she even has like a slow version. Um, she her camera is like up close you can see it's not her it was just at that time um just i my brain wasn't getting it um but i'm so proud of myself that i actually did it this time i followed her video and i don't know what my problem is it's not that hard at all to do it was so fun so i'm very proud of myself for that so i'm not so afraid of duplicate stitch and I'm kind of curious now how much I actually would like to do. I've always wanted to embroider and there are so many beautiful kits out there. So I, I kind of want to, um, or sometimes you, I know that uh, it's kind of a thing now you're seeing people knit uh, cardigans and they're doing like these pretty little flowers and stuff on them. So I'm kind of curious now if I, I have a baby knit that uh, I spoke about it last time. Um, I have a baby sweater that I'm going to be making very soon, actually. I should be casting it on. Um, 
so I kind of wonder how good I would be at doing it. I'm curious as, as to wanting to try it now. Um, so yeah. Hello Kitty, Knitter Bees. I will have it all linked below. It is a knitted pattern. So much fun and it is so cute. So I have that finished. And then the Green Dragon, I, I know I have never shown it on the podcast. Um, the sad part about it is I think all I have left to crochet is his wings. That's all I have left to do, I believe. And then sew him together. And I think that's the part that's where I'm dragging my feet because it's my least favorite part. But I have to get it done. So, well, I don't have to, I want to. So yeah, that's it for my works in progress. So now I'm going to share with you just a few things that I have gotten in the mail. And or picked up. So if that's not really your thing and that's all you would like to see, then I will see you again soon. Like I said, I hope to be back in two weeks and I probably will, but we'll see how it goes. It is summer too. So, uh, I know when it was so hot, I wasn't really knitting just cause it was so hot, but hopefully I'll see you guys again very soon. So I hope you're having a good one and take good care. Happy knitting. But if you'd like to stay tuned, please do. I have some goodies that I would like to share with you. So the first one, um, I was so excited. I'm always so excited to see my friend Tracy. Hi Tracy of Grizzly Knits. Um, I love seeing when she posts new things. I am obsessed with her knitting jewelry. So, and they come in these cute little, cute little bags. Her stuff is always so well packaged. So Tracy did a collaboration with Knitty Natty and uh, uh, Tracy did, sorry, oh, my mind went blank for a minute. Tracy did a sock uh, stitch marker set. So here's Tracy's card. You can check her out on Etsy on Instagram as well. I will try to remember and link her below. But I just had to get this set and I've so badly been wanting to use it, but I haven't just because I wanted to share how beautiful. So that was the set. That was her collaboration that she did. And they are all progress keepers. So they got the, like, um, I think they're like earring backs. I can't remember. So pretty. I absolutely love it. Teal is one of my favorite colors as well. And I just love it. And I also, I think my favorite one is this one here, the little pearly one. So pretty. So now I can put these on my project. So thank you very much, Tracy. I love them. So I got those. And then one of my other favorite stitch marker, um, stitch marker makers is Ocean Loop Studio. She is, Tracy is from Ontario, Canada, and Ocean Loops is from Calgary, Alberta. And I think her name is Leah, if I remember correctly. Now this is one of, whoops, I just dropped her card. This is one of Leah's summer sets, I believe that she came out with. And again, I am obsessed with all of her things. And when I saw this one, I just had to get it. That hot pink, oh, it's to die for. But the little pineapple, the fishy. Let's see if I can move that over so you can see the fish a little bit better. No, not gonna work. But there's a little fishy, there you go. They are so beautiful and I just love it. She always stamps your name on the bottom. She puts them on ribbon and I believe she like, she like hand paints the little, the cards, like amazing. I have, I have uh, 
talked about it before. I really love her aesthetic. You not only get these beautiful stitch markers, but the packaging is just like, it's so beautiful. I absolutely love it. Great quality. These ones are actual stitch markers. I love these. Um, like when I knit my socks, I, uh, I knit magic loops. So I put the stitch mark, a stitch marker on each side, uh, to different, uh, like, for my front uh, stitches to my back stitches. So I love having these. I don't need more stitch markers, but when I saw both of these sets, I just had to, I just had to order because I like supporting my friends, but also they're, they're very beautiful. So I got those. Now I'm very excited to use them. Um, and then, I got some yarn too. So me and Angel have been doing like this twinning thing where we're like buying yarn and doing matching socks. I love it. So we end up seeing uh, Rose Hill Yarns uh, came out with this new colorway and it is on her uh, fingering weight, 463 yards with a 92 uh, yard mini skein. It's a 75 superwash merino, 25% nylon in the blooming colorway. It is so pretty. I absolutely love it. And I have knit with Rose Hill yarns before and I really enjoyed it. So I hope that's focusing because I can't really see it. And there's her, her tag. Rose Hill is from Alberta as well. Um, the only, uh, it's not a bad thing at all. I, the fingering is a little bit on the thinner side, so it's not quite as plump. That is just a, one of the things about it, but I don't mind that at all. I actually really like it. But that was, me and Angel both have one of these, so we haven't cast it on yet because we both have like a billion socks on the go, which, you know, is my fault because I'm always enabling. I'm like, oh, look at this color or, oh, look at this pattern. She's bad for it too. But yeah, so that will be a future sock, sock cast on. And then I was watching um, Emily of Salt City Knits uh, she re recently uh, knit a pair of socks uh, using um, Malabrigo and it is on their ultimate sock base. So Malabrigo fingering, um, it didn't have nylon in it, but their new ultimate sock base does. So I've never tried it before and I love Malabrigo. So I saw this was available where did I get this one from? I believe I ordered this from Yarnit in Coburg. Um, sorry, it's been a long, June was a long month. Um, so the Malabrigo Ultimate Sock is fingering 420 yards um, per 100 grams and it is a 75 superwash merino, 25% nylon. And the colorway is Gloria. And I absolutely adore it. It is beautiful. It will most likely be a pair of socks. Or maybe I'll find another another idea for it. I'm not entirely sure yet because you know how I am crazed about shawls. So maybe it will be in a shawl. I don't know. But all I knew is I wanted to try it. So... There's the tag, Malabrigo. So beautiful. So that was another purchase that I had made. And then when I went to uh, Pearl and Jay this past week and got the ancient art yarn uh, for the sock along, I picked up two more skeins for socks, future socks. And this time, um, I got 
Opal. This is on their extra large. It is a worsted weight. And I absolutely love like Regia, um, Opal, all those yarns. They are like a workhorse type yarn. So they're a little bit more rusticy feeling, um, but I really like them. Um, I'm gonna go as far as saying my tastes have changed. So when I'm knitting, I, I don't mind knitting with this at all. It's really nice. Um, the comfort yarn feels the same. Um, I'm gonna go as far as saying that I love knitting with the Superwash Merinos. They're so soft, they're so luxurious. But to wear the socks, I actually prefer like this rustic key feeling type. So you could say Patton's Croy is the same as well. Um, that's the way that it feels, feels and holds up. So I saw the worsted weight one and I'm never, my very first pair of socks years ago was a worsted weight pair to learn the, uh, the technique and they're way too big so I can't wear them. But I am very curious to try this for worsted weight socks for the winter. So that's how they will knit up. It does like a self striping, self patterning thing. Then there's the tag. And it's just very, very beautiful. I love, I'm really loving the corals right now. So I got that one. And then watching Kay the Crazy Sock Lady, she's been uh, knitting up the, um, the Regia Perfect. And I am, I've always wanted to knit a pair, but I just never had, I can't say I never had the opportunity. My local yarn stores had them. I just never, never got them before. So I decided that I would. Um, so here's the one that I got, Regia Perfect, and that's how they will knit up. So this one is color number 07154. So if you're not familiar with Perfect, um, you'll see that it has this yellow, yellow strand here. So I actually will have to watch a video and I don't know if Kay has a video on how to start them. I'm not sure, but I'll have to see if there's actually a video um, on how to start. Now it does say easy start right here. So maybe the instructions are in there. I think they are. Um, I just don't want to pull the tag off yet. Um, but you would cast on after this yellow part here and then you just keep knitting and then once you get to a certain part you do your heel and your toe and you can get a pair of socks out of it. So it looks very interesting. I see the one that see the ones that Kay has been making and she says how fun they are and they do look like a lot of fun. So I wanted to give it a try and a go. And yeah, I really, I really liked this, uh, this colorway. So I thought, and it it's a gift for somebody. So yeah, I thought I would give it a try. So I got that one and did I bring anything else? One last thing. The last thing is not yarn related, but I did post about this on my Instagram. Uh, Angel made this beautiful uh, mug for me. Well, it's not a mug, it's a tumbler. It says, it's a yarn thing you wouldn't understand. And I absolutely love it. She has the exact same one. Uh, she got the new Yeti uh, Rambler in orange and uh, she put the black sticker on it. She, has, she makes them herself. Uh, the stickers and as soon as I saw it I was like can you please make me a matching one so I ordered um I ordered the rambler and got it shipped to her and she was so amazing and she put it on so now we have semi-matching bottles I got the red which is uh, 
a limited uh, a limited color from their basic colors, but it's really amazing. It holds one uh, bottle of water, and I really love it because it's got the easy twist top, and then you just drink from it. It's my favorite water bottle now, and I've been taking it everywhere with me. I absolutely love it. So thank you so much, Angel. I absolutely love you so much. I've always wanted a, a tumbler with knitting on it, and I plan to have more in the future. Yes, I've been keeping this definitely close because it's been so hot. So yeah, I think that is pretty much it. Um, kind of sad that I couldn't find my gnome, but I will share it with you guys next time. So yeah, I hope you guys have a great, uh, great weekend. It is, it's still pretty hot here. It's sunny today and warm. So I plan on a hibernating. I am going to try to work on some, uh, socks and yeah, just take it easy, have a relaxing uh, weekend, and yeah, I hope you guys do as well. I, wherever you are in the world, I hope you're having a good time. I hope you're keeping cool and getting lots of crafting done. So until next time, I will see you soon. Bye.